Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am an Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja and today I wanted to talk to you about MTHFR and homocysteine. Now, if you're suffering with an adrenal fatigue problem, you have uh, fatigue, you have brain fog, you have anxiety, you have low energy, you can't wake up in the morning, you crash in the middle of the day, and you just have brain fog and anxious, um, then chances are you're not making energy properly. And if you just heard about MTHFR and you're wondering what kind of a piece of the puzzle that that plays, this video is going to add a lot of value to you. And really what it comes down to is homocysteine. Homocysteine has to get converted into methyl homocysteine. So basically what's happening here is we're adding a CH3 group on to homocysteine by going through this gene here, MTR. And so first thing is you need to know what your MTR gene is doing because it's not only about MTHFR, it's also about MTR. Where MTHFR is, it's over here and it basically made methyl tetrahydrofolate. So that is something that we need as a cofactor for MTR to work. So think of it as you're on a highway and you are driving and you come to a toll in the road and you got to pay. That's what the methylfolate is. You need that toll in the road. However, your MTR gene may not be working very well either. And, you know, there's 23,000 genes, not just MTHFR. There's the MTR gene and it could be plus plus or plus minus, which means that it's not going to be working at optimal efficiency. So now you have a double whammy. If you have an MTHFR gene and you're not making methylfolate, which is the cofactor, and then all of a sudden you're not able to um, methylate homocysteine into methionine, which requires that, then now you have a double whammy. And you can have a triple whammy in terms of methylcobalamin. You need methylcobalamin also as a cofactor in order to make homocysteine into methionine. So it's really, really important, A, that you not just think of it in terms of MTHFR. You need to think of it in terms of MTR and MTRR. Those are very, very important genes as well. Um, a lot of the times, homocysteine's ranges you'll see on a blood test is 0 to 15, which is ridiculous. That means that if I have 1 and you have 14, we're both the same. Or in order for me to be flagged on the low end, it has to be more than not 0, or it has to be less than 0, it has to be minus 1. An optimal range is 7 to 9. So we can tell if this whole cycle is blocked, then typically homocysteine is going to start to rise. And I've seen people have 19, 24, and I know that they have some major blockages. But today also what I really want to tell you about, it's not, you can have no weak links. Your MTHFR may be working perfectly, your MTR may be working perfectly, but then you have this thing called life, and you have environmental toxins, and you could have nitric oxide uh, production from inflammation. You can have lead, mercury, or um, free radical damage, acetylaldehydes. Those are produced a lot with candida or alcohol, where you're producing all these aldehydes. And you can also have um, infections or too much SAMe because you're taking too much. What's going to happen is that's actually going to shut down this enzyme even further. So you can have a triple whammy where you don't have the methylfolate, you don't have the methylcobalamin, you also don't have, you have these infections and that's causing your methionine levels to go down. And guess what may be happening is you may also be a vegetarian and you're not getting very much methionine in terms of your um, protein levels. So um, a lot of information we talked about here, but the first one is it's not only about methylfolate or, or MTHFR. Uh, homocysteine, if levels go high in homocysteine, then chances are you're not converting it into methionine. There's a whole other direction that homocysteine goes, but we're not going to talk about that in this video. And then lastly, you can have some of these epigenetic factors, heavy metals and leads and mercuries and infections and candida and um, too much supplementation of SAMe such that you just shut down this whole cycle you're not producing methionine. And if you're not producing methionine, then you can have brain fog, focus, concentration, inability to detoxify, uh, fight off an infection, regenerate your nerves, 
break down hormones. And so this is where we start to look outside the box and look at how genetics and your life are related to your adrenal fatigue problem. Anyways, I know this is a complicated lesson. My name is Dr. Joel Rosen. Um, please give me a thumbs up, a share, a like, a comment. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and make sure you check me out on uh, my Facebook page. It's called Adrenal Fatigue Recovery. And then lastly, I have a blog called Adrenal Fatigue Society. So look forward to helping you with your adrenal fatigue nightmare. Thank you so much.